in today's video I will be using the Z5 II for a bit of astrophotography. I will be going out to a dark sky location to shoot some night sky time lapses, where I will put this camera through its low light paces. So, let's get into it. So I have driven three hours out of the big city to get to this location. Now it is a pretty dark sky location because I am out in the middle of nowhere. This is pretty much, when I say middle of nowhere, this is the middle of nowhere. It's backcountry. Uh, there's hills and lots of forests around. Uh, there's no real traffic or light pollution or anything like that. This is, uh, yeah, the middle of nowhere. But it's going to be a good spot because there is no moon tonight and these hills block out a lot of the ambient light from the cities or smaller towns around me so it's going to be very very dark unfortunately it is the sort of middle to end of october where i'm shooting this and that means that i'm just out of milky way core season here in australia i do sort of get a little glimpse of it but it sets about 10 30 in the evening so i should get a little bit of a taste sort of early evening till maybe 11 o'clock if i'm lucky but it's predicted for no clouds, there's no moon. Uh, the only thing, it is going to be extremely hot today, which means there's no clouds. So tonight's going to be nice, but today is going to be a bit of a scorcher. I think it's predicted to be about 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. There is a breeze at the moment, but I just have to ride this out uh, until the sun sets, and then it'll be quite pleasant. But anyway. Uh, it's not about the weather today, it's about the evening. So I will be shooting on the Z5 II. This has the same sensor as the Z6 II, one of the all-time greats for low-light shooting. Now, I'm not too worried about, you know, how the camera is going to handle the low-light. I know it's going to handle it well. But I want to focus on what I can capture in a location like this that is super dark. Now, I'm not going to be focusing on single images here. I'm going to be focusing more on night sky time lapsing. Now, I love a single night sky image as much as the next guy, but a night sky time lapse really works for me. There's something about the passage of time and the ability to catch that and see how the sky changes over an evening. So that's what I will be doing. The same settings will be exactly uh, perfect for a single image as they are for a time lapse. So the gear that I'm using tonight, three lenses. I'm using a Viltrox 16mm f1.8, the Nikon 20mm f1.8, which is a standard for astrophotography, and the Nikon 50mm f1.8. Another thing I'll be using is the lens muff. Now this is just a Velcro little pouch where you can put uh, hand warmers in, and then you wrap that around your lens, and it keeps any condensation or dew off. So I'll be using that. Not sure if they'll be due today because it is so warm, but there may be sort of a, a this breeze is a bit fresh at the moment, so maybe that could impact the amount of dew that will be happening early morning um, or this evening. Another bit of gear that I will be using is the Anchor Power Bank here. Uh, for long time lapses, it's good to have a little bit of external power, which means you can shoot for seven hours, eight hours without having to worry about changing out any batteries or the time lapse stopping mid-shoot. So that's pretty much it about gear. Uh, I might just have a look around, see what subjects, see what compositions I can get here. There's, it's pretty, it's pretty lean on subjects, but there is a tree right behind me that's probably the best of the bunch around here. Uh, be nice to get a silhouette with a bit of the Milky Way behind it or something. Um, and there's also a weird uh, tree behind me with cattle skulls on it. Uh, so I might have a look at that and see what I can find um, before it gets too hot. So this tree right behind me will be composition number one. The Milky Way core will be to the right. Uh, and I can see that around 7.30 in the evening. And it'll set probably around 10.30. And then at that stage the tail of it will pop up on the left. So I'll get the whole sequence of the core setting and the tail rising in one thing. So I might go for a, maybe a seven hour time lapse. We'll see how it goes. Not sure if it will be a uh, foggy early morning, but we can work that out as we go along. It's a very nice static tree. There's not much around it. And it, I think it should be nice 
there's a town uh, directly behind me as well so I may, may get sort of ambient lighting from that which may also add to the silhouette of the tree that I'm going for but I think it should be a nice shot over that seven hour period. So another shot that I'm thinking about is focusing on this ridge and these trees here. Now I might shoot extremely wide at about 16 millimeters and I want to use a gimbal here. So I want to use the DJI Ronin 4 gimbal, which has a built-in time-lapsing feature, which I'm going to pan across following the Milky Way as it goes across here and see it set over there. Uh, that may be a four hour or five hour time-lapse. So I'll track it this way and then finish over there. Being wide, it should be nice and I should get everything in it. I shouldn't get too much light ambience from the town because of the ridge should be blocking a lot of it but I think it's going to be a nice shot tracking it as it sets in the horizon. So that's pretty much the two compositions that I'm excited for tonight. Really excited for that tree behind me. I think it's going to be really great seeing it set behind it and the silhouette as well. Also the tracking shot with the gimbal will be quite fun and, and something that I haven't done in a while as well. So I want to also do something with that skull tree behind me, but I'm not sure yet. I'll see how long um, and if I have any time left in the evening. I also want to do something with the tail that will be above me here. Um, but again, I may run out of time, but I know it's going to be just bright and just full of constellations and stars. But again, I'll see how much time I have during the evening. So all I have to do now is wait for about 10 hours until the sun sets. Hopefully I can ride out the heat and uh, come back refreshed after the sun sets in the cool of the evening. All right. So I have just set up the whole gimbal Z5 II and just try and get that to work. So this is my first keyframe. Let me just record it so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, so technically this is the view I'll be doing. I have a 20 millimeter lens on here and it's all connected up and ready to go. So this is my first keyframe and if I preview it through it will move to that way. So obviously it's not exposed correctly for here but uh, this should follow the Milky Way as it passes through. It starts over there. Let me do that again. So that's where it is, that's, that's where it's going to start, that's where it's going to end. So it's going to take me four, three and a half hours to get there. So that's pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to leave that here. I've already done a test with the time lapse and everything. Controlled on a phone app once again, the good old phone apps that are reliable with Bluetooth. But anyway, this seems to be working and uh, I'm ready to crack on with that. It is currently 10 to 5. So sun will be setting very soon and then the action will begin. All right, so I am at the tree here and I've got my camera set up ready for a time lapse. Now I'm expecting to get a little bit of the Milky Way just in the right hand side of this image here. You can't see the tree here because it's very, very, very dark here. But I'm hoping to get just a little taste of Milky Way core just to the right. So I'm going to start this time lapse. It's currently 7 p.m maybe a quarter past seven and then I'm going to go to 2.30 in the morning. So I'm going to be using a power bank attached to this just to power on through. Uh, I don't know how many shots that is. I think it's 1800 shots, 2100 shots. I don't know. I forget what it is but that's how many shots I will be doing at the moment. So this is all ready to go. It's just just hit dark, official darkness and I've got to tell you it's dark and there's so many stars here. It's incredible. There's lots of kangaroos hopping around in the darkness here, crashing through the scrub. Gives you a bit of a, you know, head on a swivel hearing all these noises, but man, this is a dark sky location. I can see the Milky Way with my own two eyes up here. So I better start shooting, better get this set up before it sets 
and I miss out on that lovely Milky Way core. So let's do it. in the morning and the temperature has dropped significantly considering how hot it was this afternoon I've come to this tree there's these uh, cow heads cow skulls not cow heads but cow skulls uh, nailed to the tree now it's not my thing to have animal skulls attached to anything it's just not my thing but this is cattle country. There's lots of, you know, cowboys and cattle stations around the place. It's the way of life. So, so what I'm going to do is use a Z5 to a 50 millimeter lens and a budget sort of uh, onboard camera here, video light here, just with a bit of paper towel as a diffuser. I just want to get the tail of the Milky Way, which is behind me here, um, just out of focus and focus on the skull sort of a contrast of time or whatever if you want to look at it that way but I think it's just a nice shot I've just just gently lit the scene so the skulls lit just a little bit and all the sky is all out of focus with that nice you know rich bokeh look um, and that's so that's f 1.8 so anyway I'm going to give that a go and uh, see how it looks so it is nearing 7 30 for me to kick off it's still sort of a little bit light around the horizon here it's about 15 minutes before 7 30 so it's still uh twilightish blue blue hourish uh but the cicadas have kicked off tonight and it is deafening it's it's actually really painful to listen to i think uh, because today was so miserably hot that uh it must have flicked a switch in them and they hatched and they're all kicking off it's uh it's something else let me tell you uh, but anyway what i'm going to do now is uh adjust my camera get it all in focus make sure everything's in focus it's still a little bit too light just yet for the milky way to be seen but when it's uh 7 30 which is in literally 15 minutes it'll be ready to go and uh that should be it then i'll leave that till 11 o'clock 11 30 and then i'll come back out and focus on the tail of the milky way which will be facing north facing southwest at the moment and then i will be facing north to close out this very loud and warm evening Now this is my final time lapse of the evening, this time trying to catch the tail of the Milky Way as it sets. Unfortunately a cloud bank moved in only a few hours after I started. This was a cloud bank that none of the weather apps I used even predicted, so what can you do? But nonetheless it turned out okay. So that's the Nikon Z5 II for astrophotography. With the sensor of the Z6 II and the polish of the Z9 and Z8, there's lots to love. I do wish it had illuminated buttons like the Z9 and Z8 and an LED screen on the top just to check your settings while out in the dark. But other than that, this is an amazing can-do camera and one that's perfectly suited for night sky shooting and time-lapsing.
As usual, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.